to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin this is the gospel of christ to proclaim good news unto the poor the gospel of christ spreading the soul-saving message of jesus and now ben bailey this is the gospel of christ the single greatest question in all the bible is what must I do to be saved? Acts chapter 16, verse 30 and 31. But as a follow-up to that question, another great one that we want to discuss today is, what must I do to stay saved? Now that you are a child of God, now that you're a Christian, what can I do every day? Practically speaking, things I can put in place every day that I can do to stay saved. We welcome you to our series of lessons on the subject of be faithful. Be faithful unto death. Today we're going to answer that question, what must I do to stay saved? As always, we're so glad that you've joined us for our broadcast today. Today's lessons are being brought to you by members of the Lord's Church, the Church of Christ. The members of the Lord's Church in your area would love for you to sit down or come and visit their assemblies. If you'd like to have a Bible study with them, they'd be more than happy to make that available for you. Also, here at the Gospel of Christ, we encourage you to visit our website, thegospelofchrist.com, all of our lessons are available online as well as a host of other Bible study materials. And if you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson, it's free. We make it available free of charge to you on DVD or CD. Just write to us or call us or email us at the information that we'll give during and after our broadcast today. Let's answer that question. What must I do to stay saved? Friend, first and foremost, if a person is going to stay saved, be faithful unto death, then I must realize every day I am in a battle for my eternal soul. Friend, there is an enemy. It's the devil. And every day he's doing what he can to tempt me, to lure me, to cause me to sin and be lost. I've got to realize I'm going to have to fight that fight every day. 1 Peter 5 verse 8 tells us, Be sober, be vigilant. Your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Until we realize the battle is serious, the opponent is severe and is very dreadful, and until we take it seriously, we're not in the position that we really need to be. Uh, Jesus said to Peter, Simon, Simon, Satan desires to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I've prayed for you that your faith would not falter or fail. Friend, I will guarantee you, where Simon's name was, you can put your name today. Satan desires to have me and you. And I've got to realize, I'm in a battle for my eternal soul. 2 Corinthians 10, verses 3 through 5, Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God. We're in a spiritual battle every day, and our soul is at stake. We've got to therefore take up the whole armor of God that we may defeat the evil one. Ephesians 6, verses 10 through 17. We've got to fight the good fight of faith. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse number 12. We've got to have the mindset that God will help us, that we have the tools we need, and that we can win the battle. Part of fighting the battle is knowing you're on the winning side and remembering I have what I need to win that battle. What do I need? Revelation tells us part of it. Revelation 12 verse 11, they overcame him, that is Satan, by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony. Jesus' sacrifice, the word of their testimony, the word of God that we have today, and they did not love their lives unto the death. 1 John 5 verse 4 gives us such a uh, an important and encouraging message about winning that battle. He that is in you is greater than he that is in the world. This is the victory we have, even our faith. 1 John 4, 4 and 1 John 5, 4. I've got to realize I'm a child of God. 
God is in me through His will, through His Word, and through God and faith in Him. Each one of us can and will win that battle. And the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 57, if you're a child of God, if you remain faithful, hey, you're already a victor. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, 57, thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Secondly, to stay saved, you've got to determine more than anything else in all the world. Determine ahead of time. Make up your mind more than anything in all the world. I want to go to heaven. I don't care if I'm popular. I don't care if I'm rich. I don't care if I've got the big mansion and a big bank account and every fine pleasure and luxury of this world. You know, we all might have some type of desire for some of those things. But more than anything else, decide to go to heaven. Tell yourself, make that commitment, remind yourself regularly, that's where I really want to go. Paul said in Philippians 1.21, For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. That's where Paul wanted to go. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above. Colossians chapter 3, verse number 1. Seek first the kingdom of God. Matthew 6, verse 33. Be faithful unto death, and listen to this. I'll give you the crown of life. Revelation 2, verse number 10. You see, when you think about life, and when you think about what life is really all about, isn't this the whole meaning and purpose of life? Listen to the words of Jesus. I want you to think about real carefully these two sobering questions. Jesus said, What will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or, what will a man give in exchange for his soul? What would it profit you if you gained the whole world and lost your soul? If you owned, if you had every wealth, if you were the most popular, powerful, richest person in all the world, what good would that do you on the judgment day? None. What, what could you give in exchange? God, I haven't li really lived right. God, I, I know I, I didn't obey the gospel and I hadn't lived right or I was an unfaithful Christian, but look at this boatload of gold I've got. I'll trade you for my soul. No, it doesn't work that way. What's really important? Going to heaven. Above all else, as we think about staying saved, make that commitment more than anything else. Another wonderful thing that a person can do to stay saved is you've got to make a commitment to live for Jesus Christ every day of your life. You see, I think here's part of the problem that we sometimes face in the Christian world. People want to dress up nice and, and sit in a nice building on Sunday and be a Christian then or when it's convenient or popular, but as to living for Christ every day, I think sometimes if we're not careful, we can lose sight of that fact. If I'm going to be stay, be, stay saved, I've got to live for Jesus every day of my life, 24-7, 365. Here's what Jesus said. In Luke 9, 23, Jesus said, If any man desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. What's Christianity about? Daily Christian living. It's about not just living for Christ on Sunday, not just putting a suit and tie on, not just when it's popular or convenient. It's about living for Christ each and every day. You see, that's what my purpose and my goal must be now that I'm a Christian. In fact, Paul illustrated that so beautifully in 1 Corinthians 6, verses 19 and 20. He began by saying, Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you're not your own? You were bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are His. I'm not my own anymore. When I obeyed the gospel, when I made that commitment to Jesus, I willingly gave myself to the Lord each and every day. Here's how Paul felt himself. In Galatians 2 verse 20, Paul said, I've been crucified with Christ. No longer I who live, Christ lives in me. The life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. Like Paul, I've got to realize that old man, that old life, it's been crucified. I'm living for Jesus each and every day now. 
Paul said in Romans 12, verses 1 and 2, I beg you by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. My life is a living sacrifice every day, not just Sunday, not just Wednesday, not when it's popular and convenient. Every day of my life, I've got to make a commitment to live for Jesus to the best of my ability. And then, friend, if you want to stay faithful unto death, you want to stay saved, one of the things you could definitely do is you've got to, you must, you absolutely must avoid sin at all costs. Now, don't get me wrong. There's a passing pleasure to sin. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 25 teaches that, but it is most definitely passing because the Bible says in Proverbs 13, 15, the way of the sinner is hard. You want to live the hardest, most disappointing, uh, most difficult, the, the life that has the biggest letdown, live a life of sin. It'll lead you to that end. You see, my friends, we want to, instead of living a life of sin, we want to do our best to avoid sin at all costs. Do like Joseph, who when he was tempted by Potiphar's wife, he ran out, ran away from that temptation. Just like Paul would say to young man in Timothy, young man Timothy in 1 Timothy 6, 11, flee youthful lust. And so whatever it may be, whatever that temptation is, avoid it at all costs. Whether it be drinking, realize that's not right in the sight of God. Do not be drunken with wine. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18. Maybe the temptation or the sin is the, the sexual lust and the, and the desire of the flesh. The Bible says in 1 Peter 2, 11, As sojourners and pilgrims abstain from fleshly lust which war against the soul. That lust of the flesh, that carnal desire, I've got to avoid that sin at all costs. Maybe the sin or the temptation is drugs or tobacco. I've got to realize my body is now a temple of the Holy Spirit. I can't use it for those purposes anymore. Maybe one used to use foul language or profanity in his speech. Can't do that anymore. I've got to avoid that sin at all costs. For the Bible says... In Ephesians 4.26 and Colossians chapter 3, verse 8, let no filthy communication come out of your mouth. Now, friend, here's the reasoning, though. Why must a person avoid sin at all costs? Because sin will cost you your eternal soul. Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death. Revelation 21.8, liars, immoral, ungodly, uh, those who do things that are not right. The Bible says they'll have their place in the, burn, in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone. And then as we think about things a person can do to stay saved, one of those things is you can make a commitment to Bible study every day of your life. Remember Matthew 5 verse 6? Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. Have that desire, that hunger for the Word of God. Uh, your Word I've hidden in my heart, the psalmist said, that I might not sin against you. What's the value of Bible study? If I've got God's Word in my heart, when that temptation comes, when that sin arises, so comes the Word of God. My memory and my knowledge of that sin uh, and what God says about it comes to the forefront, and hopefully if my conscience and my, conscience and my heart is right, it can help fight that sin off as well. Jeremiah told us the importance of the Word of God. In Jeremiah 20, verse 9, Jeremiah said, Your Word was in my heart like a burning fire, shut up in my bones. I was weary of forbearing it or holding it back, and I could not. The Word of God gives us that spiritual heartburn. On a, in a good sense, that reminds us and it refreshes us to the Word of God. And so we want to study the Bible and really have that knowledge of God's Word in our heart and in our mind. And then, friend, we also suggest to stay saved, you've got to realize the importance of prayer in your life. Fight the fight every day by being someone who prays regularly. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man, it overcomes much. The Bible says, pray without ceasing. Don't ever let there be a time in your life when you can't pray. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 17. 
Think about the example of the psalmist in Psalm 86, verse 3. Evening, morning, and noon, I cry unto you daily. That's the mindset and the attitude we need. Daniel was a great example of prayer. Daniel 6, verse 10, Daniel with his windows open toward Jerusalem, as was his custom from early days, he bowed on his hands and he prayed to God. He bowed down and prayed to God even when he knew he could be put in the lion's den for doing that. And so utilize prayer in your fight against the devil and to stay faithful. And then, friend, we illustrate this as well. To stay saved, you must stay busy in the kingdom of God. You can't grow lax and you can't get lazy and you can't just warm a pew or hold down a seat in God's kingdom. That's not what it's about. If I'm going to stay saved, I've got to stay busy in the kingdom of God. You know, someone once said, it's always harder to hit a moving target. Isn't that true? If the devil's trying to hit you, if you're on the move, it's going to be a lot harder for the devil to do that. And if you're on the move working for the Lord, it's definitely much harder. 1 Corinthians 15, 58 says, Be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain. We need to be always abounding, overflowing, busy in the work of God. John 9 verse 4, Jesus taught us the importance of this when He said, day, uh, I must work the works of Him who sent me while it is day. Night comes when no man works. Day represents now. We now have the opportunity, the time, the energy, and the availability. Let's make sure we're busy working for God. And friend, here's the wonderful thing. The things we do for God now, those are the things that really amount to anything on the other side. Revelation 14, verse 13, the Bible says, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. These people who are blessed when they die, they're not lazy, they're not half-hearted, and they're not just filling a pew. They're laboring and they're working in the kingdom of God. You see, that's what God's kingdom is, isn't it? Matthew 20, verse 1, Jesus said, The kingdom is likened to a vineyard. Now you stop right there and think about that. In the Bible day and age, what was a vineyard? Well, a vineyard was a place of work where fruit was produced. How true that is of the church. It's a place of work, not a place where I go to fill up you. It's a place of work where we produce spiritual fruit unto God. And then there's another value to staying busy, and it's a value in my mind. Proverbs 16.3 gives us a great gem of wisdom about the value of staying busy. The Bible says, Commit your works unto the Lord, listen to this now, and your thoughts will be established. You ever have trouble sometime thinking the right things, not thinking the wrong things, keeping your mind focused? Listen again to Proverbs 16.3. Commit your works to the Lord. What's that mean? Stay busy in the kingdom and your thoughts can be established. And so what a powerful tool that is in our fight against the devil and for the cause of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Friend, we also suggest that to stay saved, you've got to have a, a, a firm trust, a firm trust in, in God's ability to help you uh, in this fight. You're not in alone. God's going to help. He's going to give you aid. If we can simply learn to trust, them, trust Him, He's going to be there to help us. Think about, this is one of my favorite verses in all the Bible. The Scripture says in Hebrews 13, verses 5 and 6, Let your heart not be with covetous. Don't let covetous be in your life. Be content with such things as you have. Why? For the Lord Himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you so that you may boldly say, I will not fear. What can man do to me? I will not fear. The Lord is my helper. There's the idea. We need to realize that God hasn't left us, that we're not in alone, that if we can learn to trust in the Lord with all our heart, Proverbs 3 verse 5, that God's going to do His part also. I want you to listen to before Jesus goes back to the Father. 
after his resurrection, I want you to hear some of the final words that Jesus said to his disciples. He told them now to go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. What an amazing, wonderful, and dawning task that would have been. But then he said this, And lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. I need to realize God's promise to help me. God's promised to help every Christian. God has not abandoned us. And if I can learn to trust Him, how much good that will do for my Christian life every day. And then, friend, realize this. As part of what I can do to stay saved, I want to learn to let God use me as a servant. Sometimes Christians sing the song, Make Me a Servant. If I can really learn to let God make me a servant, to let God use me as a servant. Oh, I'll, I'll have a, more than I'm able to do, and I'll stay busy, and the struggles and temptations won't have time to get into my life like they once did. You know, the mindset of a servant, that's the mindset Jesus had, right? Mark 10, verse 45, the Bible says, The Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give His life a ransom for many. Jesus tells us to imitate His example, and He is the greatest servant ever. James 1 verse 27 says, Pure and undefiled religion before God the Father is this, is to visit the widows and orphans in their affliction and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. What are some of the things I can do? Make sure I'm staying unspotted from the world. Make sure that those who are in need, widows, orphans, those who are hurting, those who are poor, what can I do to help those people? Do good unto all men, especially the household of faith. Galatians chapter 6 verse number 10. I need the attitude of of men and women in the Bible who really had that, that servant mindset. God had spoken to Samuel. And Samuel hadn't put everything together. But he finally does and Eli tells him what to say. And so God calls out to Samuel that final time in 1 Samuel 2. And Samuel says, Speak, Lord. Your servant hears. That's the attitude. Isaiah chapter 6. I need the attitude of Isaiah where Isaiah says, Here am I. Send me. I need the attitude of Saul. Lord, what would you have me to do? Acts chapter 9, verses 4 through 6. And then as you think about things we can do to stay saved, things we can do to stay faithful in the kingdom of God, friend, look for opportunities to teach somebody else the gospel. You'll never grow as much as you will by trying to teach somebody else. You see, that's what God's plan is for Christians. God made us His mouthpiece to spread the gospel. When Jesus was about to depart His disciples, He said in Matthew 28, 18, Go into all the world and preach the gospel unto every preacher. Uh, Mark 16, verse 15, teach the gospel unto every creature, take it to all nations, Matthew 28, 18. Uh, this is our mission. This is what God wants us to do. Jesus came to seek and save the lost. Luke chapter 19, verse 10, uh, uh, Christians in the first century. In Acts 5, verse 42, they taught daily in the temple and from house to house. They did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus as the Christ. Those who were scattered because of persecution went everywhere preaching the Word. Acts 8, verse 4. And do we not realize today that we also have been called to teach the gospel and to share that message with other folks also. And so that's one of the things you can do in staying saved. And then we also suggest as something that will really help you to stay saved, you need to be faithful in coming to Bible study and attending the worship services of the saints. Now friend, that's not the only thing you need to do. Sometimes I think that's all people do. That's not the only thing you need to do, but it's an important thing. Hebrews 10, 25 says, Do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together, as is the manner of some. I was glad when they said, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Psalm 122, verse number 1. You know, here's the real value to that. If I'm assembling with the saints, I'm worshiping, I'm honoring God. I'm thinking about what God has done. 
I'm thinking about how good God has been to me. I'm hearing the message of God's Word that has the ability to build me up. I'm singing songs that encourage and uplift us. I'm hearing the prayer of the saints. I'm participating in the Lord's Supper and being reminded of the death of Jesus. Every one of those items is going to uplift, going to build up, and going to encourage me to be faithful. I'm taking the emphasis off of me and man, and we're putting it on God where it needs to be. Friend, we hope as you think about your Christian life, we hope that as you think about your walk for Jesus every day, that you'll make it your desire to make sure you stay saved and that some of the things we mentioned today, that you'll put those into practice and make them, act, make them an active part of your Christian life. But maybe you're not a Christian. Maybe you're hearing this message today and the things you've heard have piqued your interest and made you want to live that life. Well, friend, you can become a child of God today. God, did you know God wants you to be saved? God wants all men to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. 1 Timothy 2, 4. If God wants all men to be saved, friend, I assure you, God wants you to be saved. God's not slow concerning His promises, as some men count slowness, but He's long-suffering toward us. Listen now, not willing that any should perish. If God doesn't want anybody to go to hell, that includes me and you as well. You may be thinking then, what do I need to do to be saved? Well, you've got to hear the message about Jesus Christ. Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Once I've heard that message, I must believe in Jesus Christ as the Son of God. Jesus said, unless you believe that I'm He, you'll surely die in your sins. John 8 verse 24. You've got to be willing to turn from sin and repent. Acts 3 19, Peter told the people in Jerusalem, uh, repent and turn again that your sins may be blotted out. You've got to make that good confession. Matthew 10 verse 32 and 33 that Jesus is the Son of God and you need to be immersed in water for the forgiveness of your sins. Peter told people on the day of Pentecost, repent and be baptized for the remission of your sins. Acts 2 verse 38. And then if you've done that, then our encouragement is be faithful unto death. Make sure that you're doing everything possible to stay saved and go to heaven. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the Churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, radio, and Internet. Our motto is to take the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. We encourage you to visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study material, well as audio and video copies of our lessons. If you would like to have a copy of today's lesson, please visit our website and fill out a media request form. Or you can email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com. Call us toll free at 1-855-458-3905. Or write to us at P.O. Box 788, McMinnville, Tennessee, 37111. This is the Gospel of Christ.